How would you describe the Earthshot Prize? The Earthshot Prize, David, is the most prestigious global environmental prize there's ever been. And the plan is to really galvanize and bring together the best minds, the best um, possible solutions um, to fixing and tackling some of the world's greatest environmental challenges. The name Earthshot is a very uh, powerful one. Uh, who invented it? Where did it come from? So we took the idea and the concept from uh, President Kennedy, who in 1961 launched the Moonshot idea, which was to put a man on the moon. Hugely ambitious, and everyone thought at the time, wow, this is a, this is a big deal. And we basically transformed that into the Earthshot, saving Earth and, 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 and really focusing our attention on, on doing really ambitious targets on Earth, much like the same way you put a man on the moon. Each year there will be how many? So we've got five Earth shots for every year for the next 10 years. They are reviving the oceans, restoring and protecting nature, fixing the climate, clean air, and a waste-free world. So in 10 years, there will have been 50 different ideas that are out there doing things to the planet. It's a hugely ambitious target, but I do think the positivity and that finding ways through this is better than saying, you know, it's all doom and gloom, we're all gonna, you know, perish. I think, I think we've got to harness our ingenuity and our ability to, to invent some of this out. Okay, class, let's jump right in. The task, revive our oceans. The prize, 100 grand. Yes, Rams? 100 grand? 100 grand. Let's do it in 15 minutes or less. You all tackled individual excellence these last few weeks. Now, let's put it to the test. Team excellence. You ready? Okay. I gave Lincoln some ground rules. Put those DJ Khaled skills to work. Set the mood. Mm. DJ Khaled! Oh. We got five peeps and a task to do. Ground rules and tact make it easy on you. <laughs> Everyone's strength gonna find its place. Communication gonna win the race. No phones or side talks, conflicts will occur. Get back on track with respectful behavior. If you follow these rules and they don't get bent, you got yourselves a team with humanistic <laughs> management. <laughs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Go! The clock is on. <laughs> Okay, did anyone write down the ground rules? I did. Awesome, so, um, so Rose, can you take notes to keep us on track? Yep. And Lincoln, we just saw you rock out with that rap, so you're a natural when it comes to the drive to Bond. Can you keep us on course there? My pleasure. And Mackie, uh, what are your strengths? I can see the big picture and create meaning. Nice. Well, I guess we know who team leader is. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I I just I just know we're on the clock. I, I didn't mean to assert myself so much. Or... Please, assert yourself. We're talking a hundred grand here. No, it's okay, really. I've just had other team experiences where that wasn't discussed right off the bat, and it led to other teammates having resentment. So I just thought it important to... Oh, I, I, I totally get it. Um, so... Do we all agree that each team member will take their turn speaking with the higher purpose leading and everyone's idea being heard? Okay, uh, let's save the oceans. Go ahead, Rams. Here's the deal. Every few months we hear people screaming about save the ocean, climate change, global warming, the rainforest. I remember in preschool, my teacher showing me about recycling with a little triangle thingy at the bottom of the cardboard. I remember my mom took me to the 3D movie about Earth. I still have the glasses from that. Um, what's your point exactly? My point, IBG and YBG. What's IBG and YBG? I'll be gone and you'll be gone. Oh my God, that is really ignorant. In keeping with the ground rules, everyone's ideas are worth listening to. Right, yeah. Thank you, Rose. I, I wasn't calling you ignorant rams. I was just saying it, it came off as an ignorant How statement. is it ignorant? It's based on a fact. The fact is, 
I love swimming in the ocean. I think that would be characterized as more of an opinion. Plato did say, opinion is the medium between knowledge and ignorance. Okay, uh, let's get back on course. Save the oceans. Go team. Hold on one second. It's true though. You see politicians and celebrities screaming about it, but Rams is right. As of right now, this moment, I can still swim in the ocean. I can climb a mountain. I wake up and have to make it through the day. Just because we can't see it directly in front of us at the moment doesn't mean it's not happening. Wait, what? You're not going to have a world to wake up in if we don't start to clean up our acts and start using sustainable energy. What are you talking about? Your kids won't be able to breathe. <laughs> My kids won't be able to breathe like you from the moment they enter this world. So what are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's save the whales. That's much more important. <laughs> okay, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to bring it back here. Kai? All the science, all the data says we have, uh, I, that we've done such damage that we have until 2030 until our carbon footprint becomes irreparable. Irreparable. We're on our way to mass extinction. Yeah. And if our government had its way, then. <laughs> oh man. See, I was counting the minutes until somebody brought politics into it. Once we go there, it's impossible to even get to point B. It is so embarrassing watching people try and have conversations. Can we just relax and get along? Everyone is so uptight, that's the problem. You gotta do things that help you chill a bit. Take up surfing, go hang outside with some friends, have a laugh along the way. So Surf uptight! Surf ocean, we're bad, destroying. You suggest that you and your friends can relax outside. Privilege. You guys keep How are you ignoring the science? No way that's that you'll understand where I'm out. coming from. Cool. And that's the problem. How many ways I the ice caps are already melting. Not even, not even not Philippians 2 verse 4 says, Let each of you not only look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. IBG, YBG. Rams! Dude, enough. <sighs> Professor? Productive conflict is based on confronting brutal facts. Unproductive conflict focuses on opinion, which often threatens relationships, much like you're seeing now. Carry on. Um, I've been sitting here listening to all of you and I was going to jump in a few times, but then I really wanted to hear what everyone was saying. And what I saw so clearly here just now is that all of you seem to really want to matter and be heard. I mean, isn't that what so many of us want? So maybe if we all just try and listen to what the other is saying before we speak or well, yell, we could end up getting a lot more done. Shakespeare said that the earth has music for those that listen. So it looks like we just had an unproductive conflict here like Professor just spoke of. So while we still have a little bit of time, let's try and restore the integrity of the team so we can kick some butt. And, you know, not have to wash off our kids with dish soap after a beach day. I did do some Googling while you clowns. Ground rules. Kidding, won't happen again. While my brilliant team was troubleshooting, we should get back to work because it says here we dump 17.6 billion pounds of plastic in the ocean each year. That's just bad. That's like really bad. I'm gonna stay focused on that 100 grand instead before I pass out. There's gotta be a variety of solutions though. Yeah, I mean, um, words are getting a little fuzzy here, but it says 17.6 billion? That's a lot of plastic. But yeah, it says there's lots of ways to get back on track. Uh, one of them is by regenerating ocean-bound plastic into environmentally, social, and economic impact. Uh, basically, the collectors of the waste will receive a premium for the materials they collect. Sounds great to me. 100 grand, 100 grand, 100 grand. Breathe, Rams. You got this. You are a winner. <laughs> we 
should also be keeping local companies accountable. Who's being mindful when it comes to packaging? I just realized something else. Why exactly are companies still making plastic water bottles? Um, I just want to say that I realize my strong opinions had, um, had an impact on the entire class. Well, team today, a negative one unproductive conflict it's just I really feel alone a lot of the time in my feelings about about what we're doing to this earth all the damage and the greed and <laughs> I've been told my whole life that I'm too sensitive I think, I think I figured, wow, look at me, I made it into this great business program. Now, now people will see me differently. People will listen. So, I, I was really just sort of screaming to be heard. Actually screaming at, at all the people who put me in the oversensitive box from, from the time I can remember and um, and I now see that violated a group trust because it's hard to hear anything that's being yelled at you and um, that's on me I promise not to do it again Emily thank you thank you for the courage to share your vulnerability with us not a word we think of often when it comes to business and excellence, huh? Hmm. Well, that can change. What you just did was a perfect example of your D drive. Drive to defend. You felt psychologically safe enough to share your inner truth with your team. Let's never underestimate the value of that. Lincoln. <laughs> Man, it went down so fast, right? Like wham. It's uh, humbling because I always pride myself on being this chill guy. And then the second I'm interrupted, I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. But what's so fascinating is that you're right. It's so true, Professor. By Emily sharing just that, I immediately felt safer as well. I also felt empathy. Yes. Vulnerability, empathy, relatability, humility, not attributes often celebrated, but are vital to team success. We just saw this unfold in real time. It's so true. I mean, I didn't even give the issue a chance when it was first introduced. I heard save the oceans and my brain went right to oceans. How about save all the lives that matter? All the people suffering. <laughs> I couldn't see past that. I missed the whole task, the task of saving the oceans. <laughs> I couldn't listen to what was being suggested or even offer anything other than what I wanted you guys to hear. <sighs> I mean, look, at least we're passionate about our beliefs, right? our place in this world, our well-being. It's funny that we're trying to strive for team excellence, though. I'd love to start over if we can. How would you rate yourselves? I think we failed miserably. Not necessarily. Fail. Fail again. Fail better. Mistakes are the portal to creativity, to learning something new to having a fresh take on things. Let this be a safe place to fail as individuals and as a team. Heck, I may even fail as the leader of this class at times. We can explore what went wrong. We can have the intention to do better and then do better and be kinder always. And that will lead to a success that's 
far greater than just money, okay? Okay, let's, let's discern for a moment where the breakdown in the team happened and see if we can bring the humanistic model to it. Yes, Emily? I'm realizing at the team level, we didn't have a common purpose. I mean, yeah, I wanted to save the ocean. I really wanted that hundred grand. Right there is when the Team C drive, the drive to comprehend, started to fracture. Yeah, I think when Ram started talking, I just disagreed with what he was saying and I couldn't even see straight. I felt psychologically unsafe. My D drive, the drive to defend, went completely haywire. Let's not forget our team's B drive, the drive to bond. Our trust in each other was totally challenged. It was almost gone. And then it was on. We were <laughs> at it. <laughs> there, there was no way we were gonna achieve the A drive, the drive to acquire, and meet the professor's challenge. It was completely impossible. All four drives were in a fist fight with each other. Oh my god, I think I'm finally getting it. Of course all four drives have to work together, otherwise it's a complete mess. It's a, it's a complete mess. Give yourselves a round of applause. I mean it. And Emily, good catch on quickly correcting your in-house language. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> People in our teams will have fundamentally different views on a multiple of things. Hey. This goes for our personal relationships as well. Hmm? Trust me. But we can make space for that and not violate another's dignity. If the higher purpose is leading, the moment we feel a reaction to someone's differences, we can recognize it and pause. Allow it to be present. Discern, investigate it within ourselves before responding and then respond in a way that still respects and values everyone's dignity. That's what was lacking when you first started the task. Simple, not easy. Anyone else? Rams? Yeah, uh, here's the thing. I don't really see my personality changing too much. And I've been told by a few people, maybe more than a few people, that I don't really work too great with others. So my question is, when am I getting booted from this team? Anthony DeMello said, you see persons and things not as they are, but as you are. So Rams, I see you and me and me and you, and nobody is getting kicked off the team. We need each other. Teams can thrive off of healthy, productive conflict. Conflict based on facts removed of personalities and emotional attachments. Let's put it to the test right now. You got this. Go. Okay, let's, uh, I'm nervous. Team task. Let's come up with three impactful ways to save the yep. ocean. Let's do it. I'm all in. I agree to do that and only that. Task focus only. I'm all in. I'm in. I want to take part in this. Bad and average teams avoid conflict. Excellent teams force task-oriented conflict and keep relationships intact. Nice. Go Mackie. Well, we just nailed the whole unproductive conflict thing. Let's see if we could force task conflict and not have a barroom brawl. Conflict. Conflict. Ground rules, ground rules. Uh, here's one solution. The Ocean Cleanup Project, which, let's see, let's see. Uh, here it is. Okay. It uses the natural oceanic forces to rapidly and cost-effectively clean up already existing plastic in the oceans. There's a full fleet of cleanup systems that aim to clean up 50% of the ocean's plastic every five years. There's also a number of bacteria that apparently eats oil, which can clean up oil spills. Okay, that's pretty so cool. So here's the thing. These are all great ideas, but they're not real solutions because it's just cleaning up an already existing mess we've made. It's not preventing trash from continually getting into the oceans and polluting it. Emily's right. Cleanup alone is not going to restore the ocean or the sea life. More needs to be done than that. All right, hear me out. I'm just thinking of this, but... 
I'm thinking if the ocean needs to not just be cleaned, but also needs to come back to life, couldn't we add life back into it by, you know, giving it more life? 100% Rams. Just by practicing sustainable fishing, a lot of sea life and coral reefs can regenerate themselves. Life begets life. And in order for the restoration process, we need renewable energy and regenerative agriculture to reduce the CO2 in the atmosphere that causes species to disappear in the first place. Ding, 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 ding. This is good conflict. Is it not, Professor? Hmm. Not only is it good conflict, I want you to know that the experts say that all the examples that you debated can and will contribute to the task. I would just like to say that if this was a sports team, I'd nominate Rose as MVP. And I know we're not doing that, but if there was ever a team leader here today, it was you. You effectively shepherded the team back to the higher purpose so we could make the decision to cease disagreeing and see that each one of us mattered. Thank you, Maki but it really was all of us wanting to resolve the conflict. I consider us the leader full team, very enlightening. Sounds like you're talking about what Jim Collins defines as a level five leader. A leader that takes a company from good to great. Leaders that have a combination of professional will and humility. Each and every one of you here have that potential. I saw it today. You all were able to exhibit the drive of a higher purpose. You showed humility, vulnerability. You had a resolve to aim higher than your own opinions, to build something greater than the conflict that arose. According to Google's Project Aristotle, this is what great leaders do. And great teams do. And great organizations do. The ultimate purpose is that the higher purpose continues through the efforts of others even after the leader is gone. Yes, Lincoln? You're our level five professor. <laughs> Mackie? Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, that is the only thing that can. Let's end there. Fabulous effort. Let the work you all did today inspire you to do more. The task was to form a team with a goal. You did that, yes. There were ground rules ignored and messy, unproductive conflict. Okay, that might even happen again. The fact that you all took the time to resolve it with the four drives of the humanistic management model, wow. Such progress, such courage and strength. So do better. Reach higher. Please. We need you. Oh, wait, Rams? A hundred grand. <laughs> Candy bars <laughs> for all next time we meet in person. <laughs> oh, oh, you want real money? Okay, go be the team to take on and win Prince William's Earthshot Prize. <laughs> Get to work. Great job today. Woo!